One heavy blow to the side of my head knocks me sideways. I drop to my knees from the force of it, which is exactly what they want from me. An aura of pain whips around my head, pulsing an ache inside my skull. If I was able to see, I imagine there would be flashes in my vision, dark spots of pain as it throbs. The black hood they put over my head hours ago prevents me from seeing anything at all. I grunt, planting my right boot firmly on the hard ground beneath me, straining against the pain in a vain attempt to push to my feet. I stumble, unbalanced with my wrists zip-tied behind my back. Someone grabs me at the elbow and I act on impulse, pushing myself full force against the touch. I use my weight to barrel into them, but it's no use. Three other hands are on me in an instant, grasping me, pushing me, forcing me down to the ground. There are voices all around me, some shouting, some ordering, all in a language I don't understand. When they get me to my knees for a second time, they keep me there. Powerful hands press down on my shoulders as I try to shake them off. Get off me, I shout, though I do don't know who I'm shouting at. Stop fighting them. It will only delay the inevitable. I freeze at the unexpected croon of a strong female voice. I had heard only men since I was captured, and the change surprises me, though the sound is muffled through the fabric hood. Good. The woman says once I stop struggling. I suppose you wish to know why you're here. She says. She speaks in English, but there's a hint of an accent there. She speaks fluently, but it's clear English isn't her native language. My new partner's name is Ezra, though of course I call him Mild Chick. Not because I want to, but because I know it's what Nikolai will call him, and he will insist I do the same, just as he insisted with the other men who came before him. I despise my native language for no reason other than the fact that it has been used to degrade me for the past three years. I was born in Russia, raised there by my single mother until I was eleven years old, before I was shipped off to New York and immersed in training to become a ballerina. I was happy in that life, but I was stolen away from it three years ago, just after my twenty-first birthday. I forced thoughts of that life away, back into the dark corner of my mind, seal it, and wrap it shut in a black box that reads, Do not open, on the side. My eyes narrow at the thought that I had opened it at all today. It was dangerous to remember life when I was free. I knew I would never have that life back. The lid of the box had cracked open when my eyes fell upon Ezra in the dance studio for the first time. I think it was the emerald green of his captivating eyes that did it. It reminded me of the fresh and bright green plants I kept in the two-bedroom apartment I shared with a roommate in New York. I had always surrounded myself with shrubs and greenery. I took pride in tending to them, as they brought me a sense of brightness, of happiness, of life. I haven't seen such bright green life in years. 